So welcome to our webinar, Mastering Gimbal Walks with Artificial Intelligence. Uh, my name is Soren Kaplan. I'm one of the co-founders of Praxi, and I'd like to just turn it right over to Michael Lynch, one of our other co-founders and CEO of Praxi. He's going to take us through uh, the webinar today. Michael. Thanks, Soren. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. A little background on myself. I... Uh... Been doing enterprise software now for about 25 years. Um, my last company we built and sold to SAP. And then um, I ran their Internet of Things division, which included uh, connections with their Leonardo platform, which is AI. Uh, we were using AI with uh, um, uh, all kinds of detection from machines, et cetera, on, on an IoT level and industry 4.0 level. Um, and so that's where my background is. And, and thanks for everyone for joining us. What we want to talk about today is Gemba Walks, but, and I think Gemba Walks are familiar with, uh, with a lot of folks. I'll go over it briefly, but really how you can embed artificial intelligence to really help people at the point of work. So a little background, I won't be super salesy and talking about Praxi too much, but a little bit of background about what we do. So basically, uh, you know, every plant I went into with SAP and others uh, had tons of paper and whiteboards, et cetera. Um, you have core applications, but a lot of this. And so what we built is a platform that allows you to digitize almost anything in the plant, turn all of this stuff into beautiful software that you get all the benefits. And to do that, instead of this picture on the left where you have you know, some of your core applications and then lots of Excel and documents and analog and connectors, we have a unified platform that can deal with existing applications, databases, machine data, et cetera, and build uh, uh, tailored applications for you really, really quickly. Uh, we have lots of customers who are doing great stuff and I believe we'll share this deck after um, so you'll have uh, you'll have access to this. But let's let's talk about Gemba and what the Gemba Walk is. Um, uh, in Japanese, the actual place I've heard it often referred to as the go see process. So getting out of your office, uh, you know, getting the management uh, out with the the staff, et cetera. And so this is what you traditionally see. And Gemba uh, are broken into a lot of different types of them. Sometimes they're focused on strictly um, uh, removing waste and you can define the waste. And sometimes they're very related to the SQDC huddle boards where you're talking about safety and quality and those kinds of things and the and the major KPIs. So they can they can uh, drive both. The main uh, issues around them and the best practices are you know direct observation where the work happens, uh, really engaging the team. And, and I would say it's really important to be positive. You, you want these experiences to be um, sort of coaching experiences for your team. Uh, continuous improvement and waste reduction is the goal. Um, Real-time insight directly from employees. That's another really critical point. You have these great people who are on the floor and understand the problems and listening to them and really learning about the problems and understanding you know, their point of view on the issues. And then leadership presence. So that direct, direct connection is a, is a big critical part. So the benefits, efficiency gains, quality improvement, cost reductions, safety enhancement, morale. And, and I think this last one's probably underrated is uh, uh, morale and productivity as well as change that uh, when you connect with your team, when you give them encouragement, when you give them coaching and you listen to them, the overall change management becomes easier because the hardest thing about any digital transformation or change is the change with the people. And so creating a cadence where trust is built and uh, coaching happens and listening happens is huge. So um, in my point of view, you know, the all of the methodologies don't work if uh, the change aspects are not uh, taken care of at a very uh, deep level. Uh, the biggest challenge, uh, effective communication, uh, clear, productive dialogue, as I said, positive reinforcements, et cetera. The other one is, you know, the, the old saying is no one likes their cheese moved. You know, it's like resistance to change. Um, people, change always feels hard. Um, addressing skepticism or resistance or really listening to their points of view to, a rather, to evaluate, um, you know, rather uh, in that collaborative way to evaluate if the team is really helping and is on board and listening to their resistance issues and then addressing them. Um, and then sustaining improvement. The other thing is once you get a process, unless management follows up, people stop doing it is my experience. And um, you might create a great process for Gamble Walks or 5S or any of these processes, but management has to be there and make it part of the culture, the expected behavior of the plant. Okay, so how does AI uh, work into this? You can't you can't use AI when you run these processes on paper. We showed some of, some of these processes up here. There's no AI here. 
There's no AI here because you, it, it's not digital. So you can't, you cannot do it. So the first thing to do is digitally transform these basic processes so you can run AI. And I'll show you some examples of that inside Praxi. Um, it may be the largest transformation in our lifetime, but you can't do it unless you're digital. Um, so you really want AI to support the user at the point of work. And this is really critical, whether a machine goes down or whether you're doing a gimbal walk or whether you're doing uh, 5S or whatever your lean process is, you want that AI to be part of the process at the point of work supporting that worker. That's the, the word praxy means the practical application of knowledge. So you'll see when we address this problem, we're really trying to address it in a very practical way. So I'll jump in and give you guys a demo and then we'll talk a little bit more and I'll, we'll take some questions after that. So um, if you go to our Gemba Walk application, this is the uh, AI enabled version of it. And you'll see that there are some menu structures up here. Uh, you can add Gemba Walks, you can generate summaries, generate executive summaries for the higher level. And then there's a, a, a nice video here that Soren put together, uh, another little quick training around Gemba Walks, but um, often we'll attach lots of documents for customers, et cetera. So whatever training you wanna do around the Gemba Walk. In the process, uh, you can see the Gemba walks that are in here. They'll show up in a nice list view with summaries of them. You'll also have the ability to view them in Kanban view, which shows you know, the, the different stages and the different Gemba walks. There's a few examples in here. Um, also, when you generate the work, you'll get a timeline view, and I'll show you how this works, where you'll be able to see the timeline of all the Gemba walks, and, and you can drill down and see who's doing what, et cetera. And then you can archive, and I'll show you the executive summary here in a minute. So in the Gemba walk, um, the, the idea is to generate a Gemba walk in the AI. And, and this is a standard sort of Gemba walk template. They come in different flavors. Gemba walks off as often, as I said, will also address the SQDC processes. Um, you can select who the auditor is. You can say which area you're, you're doing it uh, on. Uh, this is a, often a best practice is which type of waste are you trying to focus on in this Gemba walk? Because there's you know, always so many things to look at. It's nice to focus sometimes on a particular type of waste, you can add the date, that can all be automatically entered. And then what you do here is you, you list the station, there might be multiple steps at a particular station, you might talk about the type of opportunity, because even though your focus is motion, you might find that you're working on something else. And then you can prioritize, you can discuss with your employee, uh, you know, get their response, positive, negative, et cetera, on the issue and, and how you're trying to address it. And then and then add your comments here. So this is the basic process of a standard Gemba walk. Now, add what you can do with AI. Oh, last thing. And, you know, if you're, you're doing this with an iPad, you can upload images, et cetera, of the things you're seeing. And, and, and that all gets contained in that Gemba walk record. Now, one of the cool things is now AI can come in. So you're talking with your employees, you're, you're creating... Uh, uh, information. Now, what the AI can do is it can read all of this and it can generate a summary. Um, and that summary gets generated directly through the AI. You just click this button. I'll, I'll do it now. It, it'll, it'll take 15 or 20 seconds, so I won't do it after that. But basically what it does is, is it goes out to the large language model. It captures all of your notes here and then will generate a summary that captures as best it can um, all of the issues that you talked about. And there you see, you know, highlighted several areas of improvement in production processes on the negative side. We need to address shortage of workers on the shop floor, improve tool organization. So it does a really nice job of generating a nice summary for you. It'll also then, if you want, generate a list of suggested actions. I won't click it, but what it does is it goes through and creates a list of suggested actions to address what was raised in the summary. You can also edit this, um, add additional items, but conduct time motion studies to identify where excessive blending and reaching. So what you've done here using AI is augment the capability of your team. So you've identified some issues up here by talking with your team. The AI summarizes it and then generates a list based on best practices of things you might try. Now it's not always perfect, but you know, there's the AI is getting better and better, but it does a nice job of generating these lists. You can edit these to the ones that you actually care about. And then you can click this uh, button here and it will generate a list of actions for you that you can then go in and assign to your team members. You can go add the start and end dates on these things so you can address them. And these will then roll up into your um, plan of timelines and all the actions that need to be addressed. So I, I added one in there and you'll see here it's added. So that's how you can take 
um, AI and bring it directly into the uh, view of each of these Gimbas, generating an actual summary, uh, a suggested group of actions, and then to actually generate an action plan that you can assign to your team. Now, in our system, when you assign these, our team gets notified. Anybody on the team gets notified. They see their actions in a list of everything they're assigned to. And every Monday, they get an email saying, here's everything that's late, here's everything that's due, and here's everything that's coming up soon. So you have this ability to build a real action plan and execution model around your Gemba Walk. The last thing you can do is you can have AI generate, based on all of the Gemba Walks you're doing, a common positive themes and negative themes that are going on in your Gemba Walk. So this is a very simple overview that gets generated by looking at all of the Gemba Walk summaries and summarizing them into the specific sort of challenges that you're addressing on the shop floor. So this gives management a nice overview of everything that they're seeing um, and, uh, and lets AI generate it. So what you've done by bringing AI into the process is you've created a Get us and and going from di you know analog to digital, you've now created the digital record. You've got a history and an action timeline. You've got summaries and actions being created, and you've got an executive summary of the entire process. So that's uh, simply how we address uh, Gemba walks with AI. You also can bring those uh, your SQDC huddle boards, or we have lots of different processes that AI can be brought into. The way we're addressing it, and I'll I'll just take one more second on AI is we're using AI as an acceleration and augmentation to your workforce. I've never been in a plant where they say, oh, we just have way too many workers. There's always a, a, a lack of resources. And so if we can use the capabilities of AI to augment those resources and really drive productivity at the point of work, whether that's addressing maintenance issues before you have to call a maintenance engineer, whether that's uh, um, using uh, Gemba walks or 5S audits or any of the other processes or Kaizen to really maximize the efficiency of any of these processes. It's all a win for the manufacturing uh, shop floor. Um, so uh, that's the demo and we'll take questions in a second. I'll just um, uh, jump through a couple of slides. So uh, as I mentioned, the idea is to really use AI across the suite. We have lots of different solutions that are using AI practically and it will give you uh, an obey a room or a command center wrapped around your best practices. So that's, that's uh, at a, in a nutshell, the demonstration. I'd be happy to take any questions that you guys have and or comments and, um, and uh, we can uh, have a little bit of a dialogue via the chat. Great, thank you, uh, Michael. Um, so let me, um, let me just ask uh, a question to you just around where you see AI going in the future. You know, I know it's a hot topic today and, you know, it's kind of, you've provided some great illustrations of where, around how it can be applied right now with Gimbal Walks. What do you see on the horizon over the next year or two uh, around how AI will be used in Gimbal Walks, but even maybe beyond and connecting, you know, all of the different kind of disparate lean and Six Sigma and other, you know, processes and approaches that might exist in a manufacturing uh, environment? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. So um, I think generally AI on, I'll start just my understanding and view on it, and all of us are learning is the the major models are somewhat getting commoditized. So whether that model be AWS or Microsoft or Google or or open source models that came out of the Facebook model, they're they're getting commoditized. So the real question isn't which model you use. I think they'll all be pretty good and they're getting better and better. So as you're generating these summaries, you'll be able to get you know the it will be a, an appliance effectively that you can connect with and talk to, and they'll get better and better. So their ability to um, uh, provide relevant and helpful information and actions that can be taken and be able to go take some of those actions for you uh, will get stronger and stronger machine data coming off. I wouldn't be surprised if you have, you know, right now we've got vision systems that are telling you all kinds of information about your products and your uh, your quality issues. I wouldn't be surprised if those things will actually be able at some point to be able to take action um, and address some of those issues. Um, so that's part of it is they'll just get better and better. Um, and I think the big issue for manufacturers today is kind of what I'm showing here. This, this structure is not particularly great for uh, using AI in a, in a consistent and overall framework. Um, you, you, know, you can take a major vendor like SAP or, or, or uh, a 
PLM vendor and try to expand all that out. It's incredibly expensive and and slow to do that. Um, and and then you'd be capitalizing on their single capability around AI. Um, what I think the model on the right is the model that can be used is digitize everything, get it digitized, and then use the data structures that are available with that digital data that's come out of Excel, but also the data that might exist in your existing applications or databases. And then this is really where you get a massive magnification, which I do think is probably two years, three years out um, for the best practice firms. And that is that currently the examples I showed are showing how you've got a Gemba walk issue and what does the internet's best practice say on how to deal with that? And there's a lot of information out there, it's terrific. But if you have your own data that's getting uh, assessed by the AI, then not only will it be able to take on the data that comes from the external world, but it'll be able to take on your own data. What you have a machine outage, what is the, the, the solution that most likely works on these machines in the history of our company? What is our culture around these types of gimbal walks, et cetera? And so those cultural aspects, those understandings of your own data, et cetera, are going to get brought into the AI's understanding. And then that, that can be uh, augmented with the internet's understanding. And then you'll have a much, much more robust way to automate and, and augment your own capability. So it's First, digitize. Second, use the internet's uh, AI uh, data structures. And then third, use your own data structures and then automate as much as you can with all of that. So, uh, Michael, there's a couple other questions coming in. Uh, one, and you started to touch on it a little bit, um, but Gary is asking, um, by going full digital in the workplace and using AI, as you've just demonstrated, is there a concern that the team the leaders and the operators who currently update boards manually, for example, will feel disengaged from the new process. How do we deal with that kind of human engagement uh, aspect of things and change management? Yeah, there's two parts to that. One is, you know, a decade ago, it made sense to have a big whiteboard because the things have to be visual, they have to be tactile, they have to be things that people can engage with. Today, you can get an 80 inch television for 500 bucks. So you get this large screen capability and you can get touch screens for a couple thousand dollars that are quite large. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the customers we work with just have a giant screen and a little laptop in front of it. And um, so that big screen engaging capability is now replicatable in a digital realm. The other one I would say is, is this really isn't doesn't have much to do with analog or digital. It has to, to do with the way you engage uh, your team. Um, Soren, is a PhD in organizational psychology and taught me this, that people support what they help create. So when you're going to digitize, you can't come in with a digital solution to the workers and say, hey, here's your new digital solution. They won't like it and they won't, they won't accept it. What you have to do is bring them into the process and say, what are the problems? How could we help you with a digital solution? If you could have this kind of data in real time, would that be useful to you? And you bring them into the process as part of the change and digitization process. You have key stakeholders from your line workers, from your line managers, from your management, et cetera. And you take on each one of these areas. It might be your Gimbal Walks, it might be your 5S, it might be your Kaizen, it might be your end of shift, your safety reporting, any take on where the hottest part is and focus on that and build a change management process. And that will be successful. It's really not about whether it's digital or not. It's about how you engage with the workers along the, along the process. Uh, great answer. And then we have Roman asking, are the results from summaries and action plans stored by you and fed back into the models uh, that we're using to improve the AI? Like how, how where's that learning happen? Yeah, that's a really good point. The currently no. So these models are being generated based on there's two, well, there's two parts to it. One is the infrastructure that we provide behind the scenes is constantly evolving to so that the answers are better. We're not using that data to evolve the model yet. What we're doing is we're improving the way that the, the prompts and the structures and the grounding all work so that the best answer possible comes out of this. So you'll notice these are good answers. If you try to do this with just a chat GPT initial prompt or something like that, you'll end up with half garbage. So we've optimized these processes so they'll generate really nice and usable information. So that part is about the structure by which we engage with the AI. The next step is kind of that second step that we talked about. And, and I think this is incredibly valuable. You know, if we could get 15 or 20% productivity out of the, the entire team working on this, it'd be huge. But the next step is actually 
using the internal data, the data that we gather, et cetera, to improve the models as you talked about and data, for instance, you might have all kinds of maintenance data. So we index all of that data. We use that with the AI model, et cetera. And where it's stored, everything in our system is stored in the Google Cloud. It's uh, encrypted, it uses best practices. It's not It's not like uh, um, the the Google Suite. It's, it's you know, very similar to um, AWS and uh, Azure from a security standpoint. So it's all encrypted, um, multi-tenant, you know, best practices. It's a very modern application. We don't store any of it on our own servers. So, you know, there's no footprint for um, hacking at, at Praxy. It's all organized and managed by Google. Great. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael. Uh, great overview. Some very insightful questions. We have recorded this session. We will send it out uh, to everyone who participated here, uh, as well as a few other resources. There's my contact if you guys want to reach out and talk. Happy yeah. to do that. And, and there's Michael's direct info. Uh, and then also, uh, I just posted in the chat, if you'd like a more detailed demonstration, you can just click that link and and sign up and, and get that uh, directly from there. You can schedule a, a demo right there. Um, so thank you everybody for participating and uh, you're on our list. So you'll get uh, information about more upcoming webinars uh, as well. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again online. Thanks, have a great day.